of Fox 5 Studios. This is the Red Zone Sports Show. All right, but we do know this. UNLV is very capable of scoring, led by the quarterback, Doug Brumfield. This is an offense that is capable of scoring up and down the field. Yeah, and the resurgence of this offense revolves around the growth of him right now. He was he was okay. He was banged up last year. But what he has done in the offseason is he's improved his accuracy. He's improved his touch. And he looks like a whole different quarterback out there right now. Toss it back in the end zone, and it is caught. Hold in, Ricky White. What a grab. Wow, what, what, what an awesome. How about, how about the Rebel? Woo! You know, I'm still fucked up. Uh, man, I just, that, that's, a, that's such a, a huge deal for, for our group. Um, uh, just a character building win. I mean, that's the bottom line. It, it was ugly. There was, a, there was a, lot of, uh, a lot of things against you early on. And to rally like that and to play like that in the second half, to play, you know, complimentary football in, in, in a situation like that. Um, I mean, our crowd, the stadium, um, just the feel. What a thriller on Friday night. Allegiant Stadium was rocking and rolling. 21,605 in attendance. Great to see Rebel Nation out there cheering on UNLV football. I know it was a late kickoff at 8 o'clock at night, but it was a thriller. Marcus Arroyo joining me in studio. Another win, another electric atmosphere at Allegiant Stadium. I thought the Utah State win was a statement win for, for your program, but this win feels like a statement win as well for you guys. Yeah, I mean, these are these are all huge lessons that, that we're getting a chance to do here and really the full, like I said, the full season two. That statement win at Utah State was a big one on the road versus mm -hmm. defending champs. Um, to come out and to have show resilience and grit in this game and come from behind, make adjustments versus a really, a really good defense, which we knew that, a really good offense, uh, a really well-coached team we knew was going to be a piece of it. So to see our guys bounce back and to have a second half like that, to start that, really started probably that two-minute drive right before the half where we started moving the ball and got three points out of it in that uh, middle eight, um, was really big. It'll be, a, it'll be a huge piece to grow from. Yeah, 17-point comeback. Awesome to see the Rebels fight back from that. Talk about the electricity in Las Vegas this weekend surrounding UNLV football and all the buzz around your guys right now. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned that early, early in the week was how excited it'd be to get Allegiant and really packed in and, and get our fan base out there to get the city out there and behind these guys who are playing, mm -hmm. you know, playing for each other and playing really hard and taking on the personality of our staff. And, and I can't give enough kudos to the staff uh, as well for, for the job they're doing with our guys and, and getting them prepared to play, let alone the adjustments we're making in-game. And so to have that, that culmination and that, that kind of chemistry between what we've got at home and, uh, and that stadium and, and, and the way we're playing is, is really special. Yeah, 4-1 and one for the first time since 2003. A a lot of great things on all three phases of the game last night. A beautiful pregame ceremony at Allegiant Stadium on Friday night as UNLV honored first responders and medical professionals on the eve of the fifth anniversary of 1 October. UNLV coaches wore red ribbons on their shirts in remembrance of the lives lost on that horrible tragic night here in Las Vegas. We'll bring out the Rebels ready to defend their house and stay undefeated at home against a 2-2 two two New Mexico team coming off a 38-0 loss at LSU and the Lobos. They came out scrapping fast on the opening drive. New Mexico at the eight-yard line. Lobos quarterback Miles Kendrick zips through UNLV's defense and the Lobos would strike first later in the first Rebels. Trying to get things rolling. Brumfield over the middle to Nick Williams who loses the ball. Jarek Reed picks it up and takes it 24 yards to the 33-yard line. The Lobos would capitalize on the UNLV fumble. Miles Kendrick calls his number again. Kendrick would find the end zone twice in the first quarter. Lobos on top 14 to zero after one. New Mexico would open up the second quarter with a field goal and the Rebels find themselves down 17 to zero early. Next drive, Rebels trying to find a spark, but the Lobos defense, they were swarming Doug Brumfield out there on Friday night, sacking him twice in this game. Daniel Gutierrez would come out and nail his first of three field goals in the first half. This one from 41 yards out. Rebels trail the Lobos 17 to three. Next drive, Miles Kendrick loves it deep and it's picked off by Jordan Morgan, his second pick of the season. Check out his athleticism, taking it 41 yards down to the 34 yard line. The interception would lead to more points 
for UNLV on the board. Gutierrez drills a 50-yarder. My goodness, automatic goot is what Coach Royal calls him. Rebels trail 17-6. to Gutierrez, so clutch, would come out again for his third field goal of the half, icing a 47-yarder as UNLV trails 17-9, heading into the locker room. Third quarter, Rebels come out ready to fight. How can you stop Doug Brumfield this season? You can't. Brumfield takes it six yards to the house for his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. UNLV, let's go for two. Why not? Coach says, let's tie this thing up. Brumfield looking to the end zone would launch it deep to Ricky White or is that is that Randy Moss in the back of the end zone I can't tell Ricky White looking like an NFL receiver on a Friday night Rebels tie it up at 17 and UNLV keeps it coming in the fourth quarter Aiden Robbins from three yards out up the middle and the Lobos man they're starting to look a little gassed out there down the stretch UNLV takes their first lead of the night 24 to 17 Robbins racking up his eighth rushing touchdown of the season a Lobos would later kick a field goal, but things get a little chippy late night in Vegas. 11 o'clock, playing ball late night. A late hit on Doug Brumfield brings the juice out of the Rebels' defense. The whole sideline defending number two. Final minute of the ball game after tempers. Flair and Cam Oliver with his pick six says night, night Lobos. His second pick six of the season and Allegiant Stadium just goes wild. I almost knocked off my soda over my laptop because man, the Rebels, they fought back 17 to zero and scored 24 unanswered points to improve to four and one with a 31 to 20 win over New Mexico. The Rebels locked in and rallied back on Friday night. Uh, we just went in and have readjust, uh, adjusted what they has given us, and just we didn't let anybody or anything take us out of our game and who we are. Just came out and played our ball. We played fast, and we just executed the second half. Just did what we need to do. Oh yeah, you know the biggest thing that coaches you know teach us really is just be able to be in control with chaos. You know everything's always not going to be peachy and fine. You know, and when those big moments come and when it's time to step up, you know I have to be ready. And that's for all of us, and that's how our coaches prepare us. So when those moments do come, you know it's second nature to us. The Rebels making those second half adjustments, coming out fighting in the second half. Well, another highlight reel from the top QB in the Mountain West, Doug Brumfield. He finished uh, the night 24 of 33 for 233 yards and threw his second pick of the season last night in the fourth quarter, but also flexed his legs again last night, scoring UNLV's first touchdown of the night. His fifth rushing touchdown of the season, Doug Brumfield, a highlight reel every game this season. Uh, talk to me about Doug's uh, persona and, and leadership in the locker room at halftime and just kind of the body language you saw from him leading his team out for the second half. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's a combination between what to do and what not to do. I mean, there, there's, a, there's a part of playing that position that has to be the settling in and, and, and knowing that you got to get things going uh, more with your actions sometimes than with your words. And I think there's a good balance there between Doug knowing what to say and when not, when not to talk and when to just go ahead and do things right. And uh, I think we've tried to teach that in all our positions. A lot of our leadership council guys, a lot of guys like Plant and guys that are making plays uh, for us, you know, day in and day out are guys that understand that the influence in the locker room starts with, with what you do and not what you say. So um, I think Doug's speaking probably as loud with his actions as he is with anything else. Yeah. Talk about just using him more in the run game and how that is able to open up things for you guys. This season. Yeah, I mean, Doug, Doug's got an ability to extend some plays in the past game. He's got ability to use his feet and, yeah. and, and make him account, accountable in the run game. So um, it's not the first thing we lead off with because we, we just we're not that style of offense. We want to protect our guy um, and make sure that he's not the uh, you know the target's not on him on on, on most of those you know most of those plays. But um, to be able to utilize him and make sure that they have to count him on certain on certain situations uh, definitely becomes a weapon. Yeah, Brumfield rolling again last night. Aiden Robbins, the A train, rolling again last night too. But the defense was also. So lighting it up last night or on Friday night. Coach, we've said this all, all season. I think we played last night. But Friday night lights, yeah. another Friday night game this week. But coming up next, it's Pick City in Los Angeles. Cam Oliver iced the game with his second pick of the season. UNLV's DBs, man, they brought the juice on Friday night, racking up two picks and three pass breakups. UNLV's defense on a whole new level this season will break down Friday night's big plays on defense. You're watching the Rev Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Washington, the true freshman in the backfield. Kendrick fakes it, another deep shot. And it is picked off. Easy interception by Jordan Morgan, who's going to bring it back for the Rebels across the 50-yard line. Morgan's still rolling. He will slide right around the 33.
as if Friday night was, you know, already fun. Cam Oliver's pick six, back to back pick sixes uh, from Cam Oliver. I mean, the DBs have just been flashing this season. And that's just the biggest difference I've seen from last year is just, just the depth in, in your defensive backs room this season. Yeah, they're, they're doing a heck of a job. We're doing a really nice job in the turnover margin. I think we're second in country with that and in regards to taking care of the football, but then they're getting the ball away. Yeah. Um, they've been challenged on the back end. They've had, you know, the off season with the receivers we've got in and we brought in um, on our side of the ball, I think has, has made us a better football team. They've had a chance to in the off season, see some, see some firepower outside with us. Then they get into the season now and we've had a couple of injuries back there. And I thought guys have done a good job adjusting. I thought the coaches have done a great job. Coach Hayward's done a great job. Coach Maggie's done a great job on the back end of getting these guys prepared. Um, and that, and and the thing that goes probably, you know, less talked about is the pressure you get on the quarterback that makes the quarterback feel he's got to throw it down the field and throw it maybe, um, you know, out of balance, out of time, out of rhythm. And I think that all those things are, go hand in hand with the way they're playing right now. And so uh, we've got to keep it up. Yeah. Speaking of the transfers that have stepped up like Jordan Morgan, Elijah Shelton, man, number 42. He went off on Friday night recording his first sack, six total tackles, one tackle for loss, one quarterback hurry. Uh, what did you see from Elijah on, on Friday night that juiced you up, coach? Well, just growth. I mean, he's a guy that's new to the system. He's, he's a transfer, as you talked about. He's come, come in the offseason and really applied himself to kind of uh, the culture and, and trying to learn the scheme uh, as fast as he can with everybody else. But, you know, there, he's got a, a little bit of learning curve in regards to everything we do. So he's played football. We know that. Um, and he's really starting to really come along right now and be able to feel like confident and pulling the pin and getting after it. So um, really excited to see him turn it on about uh, when we're getting down to this phase of the season. What kind of work ethic and difference are you seeing from your defense just during practices this week that are, are showing up on game day? Well, it's not just this week. It's, it's you know, our practices, that's the one thing that, that's really exciting to see certain things show up. Um, our, you know, for everything we're doing globally across the program is showing up right now from mindset to training to our practice habits. Um, you've been out to plenty of practices that people have had. We're, out, we're aggressive in practice. We practice really hard. We demand a lot of our guys. And we do that because it makes Saturday a lot easier. There, there's more there's more commonalities between a Saturday when you practice hard um, than anything. So uh, just the way the atmosphere, the, the, the environment, and, and, and the, the way these guys practice in the, in, in, the, in the week are very indicative of how we play. Yeah, so much talent on the defensive side of the ball this year and so many new faces on the defensive side of the ball this year too, like Jeray Williams. Coming up next, we're sitting down with a guy we've seen a lot this season. Like I mentioned, Jeray Williams, the Louisiana native, has waited two years for his moment and now he's taking advantage of every second he has on the field. I care so much and I, it's not just for me and just the team but I care about our teammates my players like I want them to be successful too so I'm just trying to pull it out of them sometimes you got to pull it out of people and like I know they can do it I know they're capable of it because I've seen it before so just do it every play and that's just that's that's where the passion comes from because like I care for them the most like I want you to be successful I want your mama to be successful too so You're watching the Rev Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Dre Williams is one of the most passionate football players I've ever met. The junior defensive back has an energy, a love for the game that's contagious to his teammates. I see hunger, compassion, and pain in his eyes. His journey has not been easy, but his journey is inspiring to see how resilient he is and how hardworking he is to give his team everything he's got. What is delayed is not denied. Hendrick. Now motion out. Hullaby will take it on the Wildcat. Drops. Jeray Williams comes in to make the stop on Hullaby. Jeray Williams has been waiting two years for his chance to take the field with the UNLV Rebels. After playing for one season at Arkansas Monticello, Williams came out to Las Vegas to be with his best friend and former high school teammate Jacoby Winman. But due to NCAA transfer rules, he ended up sitting out UNLV's 2020 and 2021 season. It was like, I don't like to be down on nothing, but like, it was depressing. It was sad, but like, they couldn't see that. They couldn't have that. Like, it was already a lot going on here so my point was to like coach them up try to give them the best advice I can uplift their spirits and then I was on scout team I'm like I'm just gonna give them the best look so like and you've seen it like our offense grew strides and strides and strides and it was just all part of the work process I just never wanted to be that guy like I would have did this I could have did this I should have did this because y'all was in the game like I know how it is in the game like it's different that speed different so I just try to be there for him, give him great advice and stuff. 
Now that Williams is on the field, he's leaving everything out there on every play. In just five games, Williams has posted 26 tackles, one sack, and two interceptions. He brings an energy and a passion to the game that's contagious to his teammates. I care so much, and I, it's not just for me and just the team, but I care about our teammates, my players. Like I want them to be successful too, so I'm just trying to pull it out of them. Sometimes you got to pull it out of people, and like I know they can do it, I know they're capable of it, because I've seen it before. So just do it every play. And that's just, that's, that's where the passion comes from, because like, I care for them the most. Like, I want you to be successful. I want your mama to be successful, too. So, Williams tells me he's a real mama's boy. Everything he does, this is all for his mom and his four younger sisters, who shaped him into the man he is today. If you hear me talk to people and they'll be like, you're real respectable. You're like, I learned that all from my mom. Like, she didn't play that way. And then, like, she made me a hard worker. Like, I never had, like this is my first time ever having the luxury to just sit around, just play football, hang out with friends. Like I never had that luxury. Like as soon as football season was over, you gotta get a job, you gotta work. Nobody not gonna give you anything in life. Like I had a job ever since I was 13. Any off season, I remember one time we lost in the playoffs. And as soon as we lost, my mom texted me like, okay baby, y'all get them next year, you did good. But I put in three applications for Foot Locker, like you gotta go to work. Like everything you want in life, you gotta go grab it. So. Yeah. That's what she really taught me. UNLV has given Williams the opportunity of a lifetime to create a new future for himself and his beautiful family. What took two years to come to fruition is not for one second being taken for granted. Man, it, I've never been a part of a culture where people do so much for you. And I told them dudes this last year, like everybody around here put in a hand some way, like they help us, they give it like, I don't have nothing to worry about, like clothes, food, where I'm sleeping at, like, everything else straight. So I owe them to at least to at least come on the field and do my job, at least try, give them 100% effort. Like the, the Vegas community, like I've never been a part of none of this. Like I, I'm telling you, there's nothing like this in New Orleans at all. So it was just a blessing to be out here with all these nice people, people that want to see, help you succeed, want you to succeed. Like you can't ask for nothing better. And it's just one big family. Well, Dre Williams with, with tears in his eyes telling me how thankful he is to be here at UNLV and be here with you guys. Um, there's just so much to say about Dre and mm -hmm. on and off the field. He's just an incredible player. But uh, the two seasons that he wasn't able to play, you know, how what, what did you see from Dre Williams and just, you know, his energy and love for this team and, and, and how much he's he's thankful to play now? Well, I mean, there's, it's easy to see. You don't have to speak. That, that interview speaks volumes um, because it's very, it's, it's, there's a ton of uh, class and humility and character and, mm -hmm. and, and, and his uh, ability to articulate kind of where he's coming from and how he's, how he's wired. Um, he's a catalyst to what we do on and off the field. And, uh, you know, his passion fits the character of our coaching staff and our program. Uh, we feed off him. He feeds off us. Yeah. Um, and he is, he's, he's a catalyst to kind of what we've been doing. Um, he's doing a great job on the field because he's putting everything into it, his preparation, his body and mind. Um, I mean, we, we're just so lucky to have him, um, have him around and, and to make sure that we're, we're preparing him for everything. Uh, on and off the field is, is our goal for everybody, but you can see someone like that who appreciates that much, who's got the maturity to understand a bigger picture um, and to go out there and play the way he's playing, man. It's just a, it's a joy to see. Yeah, it's, it's awesome to talk to him. He tells me he's been growing so much under Coach Hayward and we can see at every game he's just improving each game but a lot of great guys on this team and Dre Williams is definitely one of them uh, packing up for San Jose State another short week for the Rebels UNLV travels to San Jose State looking to win four straight and take down a three and one Spartans team that defeated Wyoming on the road last night we'll have more on the Rebels preparation to go five and one on the road this week You're watching the Rev Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Well, San Jose State cruised to a 33-16 win on the road at Wyoming last night. Strong night from the Spartans' new quarterback, Siobhan Cordero, the junior transfer from Hawaii. We know who this guy is. He finished the night 21 of 37 for 314 yards and one touchdown. But we also know what he can do with his legs, finishing the night with two rushing touchdowns. The Spartans will be looking to go 2-0 in conference play on Friday night. And the Rebels will be looking to win four straight on the road in San Jose State on Friday night for a 7.30 kickoff. Coach Royo, what do you see about this Spartans team now that they have Siobhan Cordero on their roster? 
Well, I mean, they've shown that they're, they're an explosive team for the last couple of years. I mean, this yeah. team won the conference championship here two years ago. Mm -hmm. They do a, you know, Brent does a great job. Um, he's got a ton of continuity on their staff and what they've done both on both sides of the ball. Um, and you can see that their players emulate their personality. They, they can tell they're really comfortable. They trust each other. Uh, they play on a string in all three phases. Uh, they're physical, they're fast. I mean, this is as, as good a team as we're going to face and uh, on their turf Friday night. Yeah, this ball game last year got away from you guys, uh, 27 to 20 at Allegiant Stadium. Um, you know, what can you learn this this time around about the Spartans and all their new their new pieces? Yeah, I mean, again, this is one of the six games last year that was one yeah. scores and, yeah. and, and we played we played really, really well up, uh, for a lot of that phase of the game and, and a lot of areas. Areas. There was a couple things we wanted to back that would have changed the score, but uh, we've we've really looked at that and honed that in. You've seen some of that come to light this season on the way we've responded and played, and uh, it's going to take all that plus some here to get it done. And uh, we're excited about the, the, the challenge. What is Coach Brian thinking? What does he think about your Rebels this year? Has he called you, texted you? Yeah, we talk all the time. I mean, yeah. there's a ton of respect uh, from mm -hmm. from me and Brent. Obviously, yeah. uh, we've we known each other for for a really long time, really close, and uh, he's got his team playing as good as I anticipated. Yeah. Short week this week, Coach, just locking in, getting ready. You guys are already back to work this week, getting ready for Spart. Yeah, Spartans. we're back in and we got another Friday night. We'll leave on yep. Thursday, so uh, got to get rallied up and roll. All right, we're rolling. Rolling. Looking to win four straight. Let's go Vegas. All around the Rebels. We love it. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next Sunday at 1030. Thanks for watching Fox 5 News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.